All right. I've already done a whole video on lime slurry, so I'm not going to go too deep into it. But the lime slurry goes to an atomizer. The atomizer spins at 11,000 RPM to turn the fluid that's going into it into a mist. That mist, it has to be a mist so that it mixes well and it, comes, it has a chance to come in contact with the sulfur. Sulfur, like mercury, is something that was in the coal that we dug up and it got burnt and it just ended up in the flue gas whether we liked it or not. So the lime, this is sodium bicarbonate, bonds to the sulfur, but in order for them to meet, you got to get it spread out as much as you can. And so this atomizer spreads it out. Another thing that makes it have more surface area is we have water. And it goes in the same line that's going down with the atomizer. There's two SDAs and there's six atomizers, three on each SDA. Each one has an inlet duct. We take one out of service when we drop load. We can afford to take one out at full load if everything's working good. If the so the coal quality makes a big difference. Some mines have more sulfur in them than others do. And so some trains of coal will have a lot more sulfur on the inlet that we have to clean up. And our limit isn't based on a percent. It's not saying you got to reduce it by 80%. It's saying you got to reduce it below this level. And that level is a, a 1.6 pounds per million BTU. And it's got a different limit. I want to say it's 1.4 pounds per megawatt. This creates a funny little conundrum because the unit is more efficient at higher loads than it is at lower loads. So you use less coal, less BTUs, less coal per megawatt when we're making 700 megawatts than we do when we're making 400 megawatts. And because of that, this 1.4 limit is more restrictive at lower loads and the 1.6 is more restrictive at higher loads. So we, I want to say we picked uh, 1.2. So this 1.4 pounds per megawatt, the pounds per megawatt is what we're actually controlling for, and 1.2 is what the lime slurry flow is shooting for. So. We said we're 280 there. We're still 280 going in. Remind me to throw away my black and my red. All right. So you're spraying lime slurry, which has, which is you know 80% water, and you're spraying the water, and then that goes it mixes with flue gas and cools it down. And so coming out, you are looking at a one. 169. Wow. I guess purple is the new red. About 169 Fahrenheit on the outlet. Now there's something funny that happens, which is the south SDA tends to run way hotter on the inlet temperature than the north SDA. Alpha tends to be like 270 on the inlet, and Bravo tends to be like 290, 300 on the inlet. And that's, both those temperatures are higher in the summer. And that was, let me finish talking about the SDAs. I'll come back to that. Now we say we're controlling the 169, but what we really have is a dew point monitor. So dew point is the temperature at which moisture starts to form on out of a gas, right? So 
if you think about it in in weather, you've got humidity in the air, you've got uh, eighty percent humidity, and then boy, that is a pretty, I picked a pretty humid number there. And then at night it cools off, and the temperature falls below the dew point, and then water falls out of the air and forms on all the grass and all the cars and all the surfaces. So as long as it's warm enough, it's okay to have high humidity, and then it gets too cold and it's no longer okay. So similarly, when we get too cold back here, then it starts to form up clumps up on the side. The ash gets too clumpy and it doesn't do its job right. So we're looking at the dew point and it comes up with some number like a, hang on, let me try math, 125. And then we have a, a dew point approach control of 44 degrees. And so that's where you get your 169, is whatever the actual approach set point is, combined with whatever the dew point monitor is reading, gives you that 169. So that's complicated. Why do we make it more complicated? We made it more complicated because that 125 changes sometimes, and it changes with load, and it changes when a soot blower runs in, and it changes when the water cannons run, and all these things put extra moisture in the air, it sees, this 125 will see that and it will adjust so that you can constantly run a little bit colder than you would have if you were in temperature control and get away with it. Why do we want to run colder? Because more water means more surface area, means less lime, means less money. Efficiency. 